Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing, and today we're not talking about printing. Today we're going to start the Cohesion 3D laser board and light burn updates to the K40 laser, this big thing out here in front of me. So let's get started. Okay, so this is a sponsored video series by Cohesion 3D and Lightburn Software. Um, we're gonna be walking through the installation of the Cohesion 3D laser board on the K40, as well as getting firmware updated and installed on it and walking through the basic configuration to get you started in Lightburn. I'm going to break this up over a couple of different videos just to keep it manageable time-wise and take it in some bite-sized steps. So we're going to start off today by tearing into replacing the laser board on here. And it's just a very, very quick plug and play almost process. So if you've ordered from Cohesion 3D, what you can expect to get is the laser board, which for most K40s, it is a direct swap for the board uh, that is included in your K40. They do recommend trying to buy, and you can't see it from there, but you'll see it when we switch screens. They do recommend buying the analog version of the K40 if you know that you're going to be doing this upgrade. The digital version will work also, but you lose a lot of that functionality where the gauges and stuff that are on here are still valid. Um, also optionally, depending on which firmware version you use, you can use a GLCD similar to what you'd use on a 3D printer to be able to print directly from the SD card. And there are several options on Thingiverse and else, elsewhere out there on the web. I'll throw a couple of links down below in the description where you can actually generate a laser cut replacement for the control panel. For today's purposes, I'm just 3D printed a little box and we're going to keep the uh, LCD in that. And you also get from them, uh, of course, if you're going to use the LCD, you get this little breakout board with cables and you get the recommended power supply. Now with the Cohesion laser board, to avoid any problems, they want you to use their brick, which will connect via the side where the USB port currently is. So let's switch cameras. I'm going to grab the tools and let's get started on this thing. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are lots of upgraded panels available for the front here that organize it a little bit better, make room for the, the graphic LCD, uh, add different switches for your air assist or other options. Um, for today, I just printed the 3D printed enclosure for the LCD and we're just going to kind of stick it wherever we can, uh, probably with a magnet or double sided tape um, until I decide exactly what I want to do here as far as relocating things. Now to access this, there's a screw right here in the front, which I've already removed. Once that's removed, this lid just flips open. You can actually remove the entire top piece should you need to, but we don't need to do that today. What we are going to do, and you can't see from that angle very well, is there's a white piece here with a control board attached to it. And we're going to take this out so that we have easier access to swap out the control board. To do that, we're just going to use a pair of pliers or channel locks, whatever you have available and an M10 it looks like, nut driver. Your printer may be different, but in general it should be the same. There's one screw on the left side here with a nut behind it. We're going to just set that aside. 
And there are two down at the bottom that look to be coming off studs in the bottom. Hmm. And those are not studs on the bottom on this one. It looks like there are bolts on the bottom. So let's put a little bit of a tilt on this so I can lift that up. I'm just going to wedge that with the screwdriver. I can use my fingers. One bolt. Two bolts. And because I don't like that sitting up there like that, I'm going to take the screwdriver out. At this point, this board is floating free and we can just lift it right on out of there, as long as you have the slack on your cables. Or at the very least, I can rotate it so that we can see it better. There we go. Okay. Since these are not labeled well, they are put in here with uh, what looks to be some glue stick. Since these are not labeled well, these ones are easy because they're unique in their connectors. However, the two stepper motors for the X and the Y are identical. Once you get the, the glue off. So we're going to disconnect these that have the longer things. And by the way, I didn't mention it already, but you do want to make sure that this is completely powered off. Okay. I'm just going to leave those two connected for now. I'm going to remove these four bolts that are holding this board on. It's just a screw on the back and a, looks like a seven millimeter on the front. Yep. So let's just pop those off there quick. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to take that and set that out of the way. We should have four bolts. Two, three, four bolts. Three of these. Four nuts. And four spacers. Now we're just going to invert this process with the cohesion 3D board. So I'm just going to one, two, three, four, spacer, 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 spacer. And now this board should just fit right on top of there. And we're just going to get those nuts started. It doesn't really like the nut driver on there. So we'll do this a different way. I'm just going to use a pair of needle nose pliers on this side to hold each nut. And then we're going to tighten it up on the back side. Okay, 
the board is installed onto the plate. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of connectors and we're not going to use most of them, but we will use all of the ones that mate up directly with the other board. And that was the reason why I said, just leave these two on here for now, because we'll just move them directly off of here to their matched position on the other side. So that was there. That's one. This board you can set aside and eventually you can store it in the same anti-static bag that the Cohesion 3D board came in, just in case you ever decide you need to put it back in. Those two connectors are in. Now we can go ahead and install this inside for now, and then we'll just make these other connections. Again, they only go one way, so the power connector will go like that. Let me see if I can get you a view. But that's difficult without twisting it, isn't it? The power connector will go there, and then your end stop connector, which is five pin, will go to the five pin connector here. Extra connectors are for optional features uh, that you're probably not using at this point, but you may want to at some time down the road, which could be part of the reason why you're doing the cohesion update to begin with. For example, if you wanted to add a rotary table or an automated uh, gantry or cut plate, if you wanted to be able to control your air assist or your your water pumps from it and automate that so they all turn on and off, etc. Okay, that's it. Now all we have to do is bolt the thing back in. So I'm going to loosely put in the side screw. Just finger tight for now. Easier said than done. Ouch. Okay. And I'm going to lift it back up with the screwdriver so I can get underneath. We'll put those other two back in the bottom. That is done. Now we have one thing left to do if you went with the option of the graphic LCD. And before I put that in, I'm going to drop this back down so it's flat. With the graphic LCD, you have the cables on this little breakout board and that just plugs into the connector on here. That is right below your end stop connectors. And just make sure that's plugged in all the way. I went ahead and labeled both of my cables with a one and a two so that you know which way they're gonna go. And for me for now, I'm just going to roll them out of here like this so that I can attach to the LCD on the outside. If you were connecting to the top, you'd have to work something else out. And that should just, like so. And we can connect our LCD wherever we need it temporarily. Before I do that, I'm going to take the power supply brick that was included. Let's 
Let's open this back up so I can see. We're going to connect it through the side. It plugs right in. And if you have a USB cable, that you keep readily attached and connected. Now's a good time to go ahead and put that on as well. Now, as you saw when you're putting in your board, the SD card slot is here at the top. So we will need to access that to put the firmware on. So we don't really want to screw this down. Just keep it closed. And that is it. The board is installed. Oh, let's connect the uh, GLCD actually before I say that. Let's flip this over. I labeled them one and two. One and two. And eh, got a nice twist. That's it. For now, I think I will just stick that right there. I'll uh, maybe I'll get the hot glue gun when we wrap up here, and I'm just going to stick that right there for now. It's just so it's accessible, and I don't want it bouncing around or falling off. Um, or who knows? A couple of different options. Maybe I'll. Stick it right there with the hot glue gun. Different options. But again, once this is able to be more controlled, I plan on pr cutting a control plate for it and completely redoing this. And that's it. Board is installed. It was that easy. If you have an older model K40 or something is slightly different than this, maybe you have the digital screen uh, or a different controller board, check out the Cohesion 3D forums, reach out to them or possibly their Facebook group. I will have links in the description down below. There's a lot of helpful people there that will be able to tell you, is this board going to work for you? And how much do you have to go out of your way to make it work? It should be just that drop and easy for most K40s that are on the market today. In part two, we're going to pick it up and we're going to talk about the firmware options that are available to run on this board. We're going to get firmware installed and we're going to get it fired up. And then we're going to start moving into Lightburn. So be sure to tune in for next time. Thanks again to Cohesion 3D and Lightburn for sponsoring this series. And we will see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.